Hey y'all, it is I, Anthony the Canadian Guy, and welcome to WrestleSode. Today we're sitting down with Lumberjack Larry Woods. Uh, this was such a fun conversation. So I didn't actually speak to Larry much before this. We haven't had too many conversations, but boy did it come off like we were best friends in this, just reminiscing about like 90s YTV and amazing television and cartoons from when we were kids. I won't lie, that took up a good majority of the episode. But this was so much fun. We got to learn about his time in wrestling, what he's been doing, his time with the Rads, his time with doing things like LPW and where he came from in MPW and stuff like that, how he trained. It was such a great conversation. So I hope you can all enjoy it uh, as much as I did because, like, seriously, we just got lost talking about, like, Reboot for, like, 10 minutes, I think. It was so much fun. Anyways, um, if you guys like what you are hearing, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment down below It's for somebody that you would like to see. Or if you have a question for any of these wrestlers, we can always try to get them answered for you. That's not a problem. Just let us know below. And, uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into our interview with Lumberjack Larry Woods. Hello, Larry. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing very fantastic. And yourself? I'm doing fantastic. I'm very excited for this here today. Obviously, you, maybe you heard my little spiel there at the beginning here. Always been a big fan of yours. And uh, being down here in kind of like southern Alberta for the first couple of years, I felt so isolated from you. And I was, like, jealous. I was like, Edmonton gets Larry. And that seems like it's going to be so cool when I get to my first Larry show. And now that I've been to a few... Obviously, I'm very addicted, and I, I will say, and I've said this many times before, when you come out and you do the chainsaw thing, like, the way you do that, I'm so addicted to that. That is, like, the greatest entrance. I love your enthusiasm into it. Because, I mean, a lot of people might go, like, well, how do you do something like Lumberjack, right? But you have nailed it down. Good guy, bad guy, no matter what, everybody has a blast when you're in the ring. Well, honestly, like, like I, it's, it's always great hearing that because, um, I always have a blast in the ring. Like it, it's, it's nothing but fun. It's nothing but something I've always wanted to do my entire life. So the fact that I've been blessed with doing this for five years now, it's just been phenomenal. So I'm try, I try to make every moment last, even though some circumstances may not be there, but regardless, like you just go out there and forget all the troubles of the world so yeah i like the way you say that that's really amazing um so uh, first up how have you been obviously i've seen you at the, a lot of recent shows uh, over the last week i got to see you at both top talent uh, for a little spell there working with the uh, the new graduates of top talent as well i got to see you at love pro wrestling working with the rads which is one of my favorite <laughs> factions going just in general Whoa. right now touching tips shaking hips and winning championships, I mean. <laughs> it's catching on, you know, baby. It's, I love it. I, I, like, I sat there in my car, and I was trying to explain it to my girlfriend. I'm like, you don't understand. They, like, do the fingertips. They go, like, nah. And she just gives me this weird look. I'm just like, uh, you have to, be, I guess you have to be there. <laughs> it's definitely something and it just riles up the crowd too they absolutely hate it like i show a couple people like a couple pictures or like our entrance at work and they look at it and go is that like a dragon ball z thing and i'm like hmm i didn't even think about that till now <laughs> Well, I you know what I guess yeah because what was that's the, oh I can't remember the name of the the when they when they're actually touching what is that called when they do the thing what is that called uh, fusion. Yeah, when they fuse exactly thank you sorry yeah. I was like the worst Dragon Ball Z fan like I watched it growing up but you know like of all the things that was on YTV at the time I was like a big like um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this but like Beekman's World and stuff like that like I was big in that show and stuff like the science shows. So I was like, Dragon Ball oh. Z would come on, but then the science shows would come on later at night. And I was like, I love those shows. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah, they would come out later at night, right after like, okay, this is going to sound super weird, but some of the best memories growing up in like the 90s was YTV. So back at my dad's place in Moncton, we'd all, uh, there would be like nine, 10 of us neighborhood kids. we come in, eight o'clock would always be like Beast Wars. 8.30 would be reboots, 9 o'clock would be freaky stories, 9.30 would be goosebumps, so we're getting a little scarier, and then 10 o'clock would always be Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh. And like around 11 o'clock would be like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and then 12 o'clock would be Farscape. I love that. I remember this exact lineup growing up because obviously I was a big fan of these. Growing up, a huge fan of Reboot, obviously, Canadian show. Same with Are You Afraid of the Dark? Right? Like all these shows, so good growing up. So I, I, I completely understand 
<laughs> Excuse me, now I'm going to be coughing. Because obviously I'm a 90s kid myself. I assume we're probably around the same age. So I grew up, you know, like I know Phil. And I think the TV was named like Scrat or something. You know, the big purple TV that would just hang out with Phil all day. Oh, in re- oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, You know exactly what I'm talking about. I grew I just... up with Pogs. You know what I mean? Like hanging out on the playground oh. trying to figure out Pogs. I, I know it all as a 90s kid. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I had a couple of pogs. I'm kind of curious at how much that would go today because, I mean, people are making millions of dollars opening Pokemon cards. So, hey, I got pogs. You know, right? like, I would love to find out because my pog collection is, like, legitimately right here. So if it's worth anything, that would be really fun right there. So not bad. I've got slammers. I've got regular pogs. i got some holographics. You know, I'm, I'm like, really hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> This is fantastic. I don't think I've ever talked with anyone that has like a legit pog collection. Like I mentioned pogs nowadays. We're like, what is that? They don't get oh it. God. They never saw the commercial because every commercial end with that little hairy thing and you would just go pog. You know what I mean? Oh, and- yeah. <laughs> Come on after Dragon Ball Z or something like that. And another one you mentioned, Freaky Stories, another one that nobody seems to remember. Ooh. But you know what? I remember because it happened to a friend of a friend of mine. And that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is awesome. I, I'll like... get all your references, man. I Trust me. I grew up in that time. That's what I – I don't think I grew out of that time. I'm still wearing my hat backwards, as you can tell. I'm clearly – you know what I mean? I was born I, – I never grew out of this fashion. I've got like my – I've got an AJ Styles wrestling t-shirt on, a backwards hat that's Nintendo-based. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I so just got, cool. Honestly, all I want to do is track down like an old like YTV shirt, which I found I found a site on Instagram where they do – it's like retro tees. And then they have like a select lineup of like retro hoodies, t-shirts, like a uh, hoodie of like video arcade top 10. I'm like, that is awesome. Oh, That's what how that, I found two codes. What was that slime show where like people would get slimed? What was that called? Like, oh, uh-oh. the dude with the hair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, uh oh. Thank you. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh oh. Thank you. See, you're. See, you're. You see, when I'm not, and I don't know, you've got this here for me. Clearly, we've got YTV down. We're gonna have to start talking Teletoons here pretty soon because that's how we got it. You know, thirteen, fourteen. We got Teletoons late night or whatever it was called, where we got like undergrads and stuff. Oh. Wow. Undergrads, Clone High, Mission um, Hill. Please tell me you know that one. The Oblongs, the Ripping Friends. My God, look at this. See, I think we're like probably the exact same age because I feel like we <laughs> we did this exact curve together. We're like all our shows were the exact same. So, <laughs> hey, you know what? There's a season two of Clone High coming out. Um, what? Or sorry, a reboot of it, and it's by the same creator, same writer. So. Did you? I, I'm so happy to hear that. I can't tell you how many times I have quoted Clone High in my life. It's one of my favorite shows. Seriously, when I'm feeling ADD, I just run and I go, plastic bag, plastic bag, plastic bag. Like, I'll just do that. You know what I mean? So. so <laughs> this is great. I'm hoping that people like, like watching this and they go, hmm. Freaky stories. Haven't checked that out. Let's go to the YouTube. I hope they check out all these shows now because these are like phenomenal shows. So oh, when I think of freaky <laughs> stories, I oh the one that really comes to mind is the lady with the hairspray, and then there was like spiders in there because it ended up being like so much hairspray it created like a dome, and then they broke it open. All those spiders came out. Oh. Freaky stories, man. Oh my god! You, you know what? There was one with a hook. There's a guy with a hook. That's the only one that legitimately like oh. I'm a little freaked out at this now. <laughs> you know what? For me, the one that really got for me, like as a kid show, was one episode of uh, "Are You Afraid of the Dark?" I, I can't remember what it's called. Like the 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 legend of the dead man's float, where they like they find a pool that was like abandoned inside of the school because like some kid drowned in it, and they like find it and they do like this late night swim, and there's like this zombie that's living in the pool trying to kill kids and stuff. I remember being fucking terrified of that episode. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah i know i know exactly what um i vaguely remember that episode um what is it night of the living dummy like those ones freak the living hell out of me because i just can't like 
Nope. I grew nope. up just... like hating Chucky because I had a My Buddy doll as a kid because for whatever reason they just gave me this doll as a child. So I had like a blonde yeah. version of Chucky essentially as a kid. And then I watched Chucky and then I was terrified of dolls my entire childhood. Like I kept this doll oh. inside of like a trunk at the back of my like closet like buried under like as much weight as I could do because I was terrified of this thing. So. Oh, goodness. Well, for one, I mean, it's really hard to hate MRB, but I mean, like he's changed over the years. Okay, Did you shouldn't be free. You shouldn't be afraid of him. I miss his pink <laughs> hair. That's what. I, that's the biggest change in my opinion. I miss those pink tips. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went blonde once back in my great my graduating year. At the beginning of the year, I went blonde because I saw Chris Saban for the first time on Teen A Impact. And I'm like, he had this blonde hair. It was just spiked right up, like out to the sides. I'm like, that's an awesome look. I want that. So I did it. And it was the worst mistake. I, one of the worst mistakes I ever made. Hey, and nobody had I, good yeah, hair I, probably around our graduating class. Okay. Everybody had some sort of frosted tip or some, you know what I mean? Like there was something going on at these times. <laughs> I got it cut and there was still blood in it. So when my, when my natural hair started coming out, I had frosted tips and I never even meant to have frosted tips. I got picked on so hard. <laughs> Why not, man? Oh. It was only a couple of years past the time at that point. But like, I, I, I grew up, this is like, I graduated high school, still not understanding quite how to do my hair. I was such a nerd. Like I didn't figure out like doing my hair was something that was important to my presentation as a person until I was well into being an adult. That's how bad I was. You know what I mean? I didn't figure it out. I'm like, Hey, did you, people look at your hair and they judge you quickly, don't they? I didn't figure that out until I was an adult. If I could go back. I'd be like, just try a little bit harder with your appearance in high school, and you might do a little better. It might be fine. <laughs> what? If we knew what we knew now and then go back in time, it's like, oh, this is fantastic. Like, life is so much easier. Oh. I'm going to enjoy high school rather than, hey, let's get the hell out of here. I would go back Thank and tell you. myself to not feel self-conscious about dressing goth because that's the only time it's going to be acceptable anymore. Because after that, that's nobody's going to look at me and be like, hey, he's normal as a 30. It doesn't work anymore. But as, as 16? Go for it, buddy. Just do it. You were so on the fence about it. Just go back and do it, buddy. Just do it. Right? Like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I always hung out with, like, I tried hanging out with everyone in high school. So, I mean, I, I played soccer since I was 10 years old. So, always with, like, all the athletes. We tried staying away from the hockey players. There was a couple in our group. But a lot of hockey players were kind of dicks. So, like, small-town hockey players, like, they think they own the world already. And it's like, oh, well. But I'm not saying all hockey players are like that. No, 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 no. But, yeah. I remember my clicks in high school. I know exactly what you're talking about. I put the same faces to those clicks. I get it. <laughs> so, I guess this brings me to some questions about wrestling. So, is that, like, are you were you an athletic kid growing up? Did you just, like, fall in love with wrestling like every other kid did in, like, grade three because crotch chops just became such a part of, like, the popular culture in the playground and everybody was doing them? Like, how did it fall? How did you fall in love with wrestling? Oh, I got to think about this now. Um, honestly, it wasn't grade three. Like, it was well, be well before. Like, I was, I want to say I was around, like, maybe excuse me, maybe five or six, my mother got me into wrestling. So um, every every Monday night, like we'd always watch Monday Night Raw. And I, and I still remember this to this day that um, I put on, or mom put on WCW one night and uh, Goldberg was out there. I'm like, hey, it's Stone Cold. And I was like, no, that's Goldberg. <laughs> Who? <laughs> I was like, oh. Obviously, I was a WWF guy growing up. So, <laughs> and then yeah, no, just continuously kept watching, kept watching WWF, and like, um, geez, all the way up until yeah, about six years ago, when I when I was introduced to my very first mini camp, and then I went into the mini camp and haven't really looked back. My mother and I haven't missed a single event coming to Edmonton. So if it's a live event, if it was backlash, if it was raw SmackDown, doesn't matter. We went to every single one. So it's always been a tradition of ours. So that's so heartwarming to hear, especially like to have something like that with your mom or your dad or something. You know what I mean? It's got to, it keeps you connected. 
Do, does she come to your shows sometimes, or like, is that like, no, I don't want to see him get him killed, self killed constantly? Or so at first, she you know, might have had a had to have a little liquid courage coming in because she's like, oh no, my baby boy, my boo <laughs> bear is about to get hurt or something. <laughs> but now it's like I remember at one of the love love shows where I uh, where me and Rich ended up like where the rads kind of finally formed up um i always wanted to get my grandparents out there and uh unfortunately my grandfather wasn't able to ever come to one of my shows but my she brought my grandmother so it was just like too so surreal to see my grandmother out there too and like still as a baby and all that being able to go up to her to her and hug her like like after the match and all that like it was just yeah that's a, such a heartwarming story you know what i mean like <laughs> i'm a dad now so like i've i've become really soft you know what i mean like everything that's like heartwarming i go like oh you know what i mean so to hear that like from like a like a parental perspective i'd be so happy to see that you know like if my daughter grew up and became a wrestler i would be at like every show that I possibly could being worried to death, but you know what I mean? Like wearing the signs, booing her if she's a heel because she was terrible. You know what I mean? No matter what, yeah. it's just family when it's important to them, it makes it just so much better. Do you know what I mean? Oh, exactly. It's like, um, I'm a big football fan and uh, I'm a big Philadelphia Eagles fan. Huh. So one, one of the biggest rivals that they have are the Dallas Cowboys. And when Dak Prescott took over as head, or uh, sorry, the uh, starting quarterback, he, um, his mother, a story came out that his mother passed away when he was still in university. So when he was playing ball, he'd always send his mother a text and like just before every single game. So I kind of saw that and I was like, you know what, I'm going to run wild with that because I, I love that story. So before every match, I always give my father a call, whether it's like five minutes before I'm out there. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to give my dad a call. Or if it's like an hour before the show, it's like, hey, just having a show. And if he doesn't answer, that's OK, because then I just leave something on the on uh, the answer machine for my for my dad, and my stepmom. So. So far, I've been pretty decent with those phone calls. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. It's fun. You know, but I mean, everybody has things, right? Like, I mean, if whether it be like some sort of tradition or like something they just got to do, it, you just yeah. people have it, right? Like you got to call your parents. Whenever I get onto a plane for whatever reason, I got to touch the, like the hull of the plane. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, this is uh, this is what I got to do. And then I can go inside. I don't know what I mean. I'm just a weird person. But everybody's got something wow. that they got to do. It's just makes people feel more comfortable that way. Oh, 100%, right? Like, it's it's just, a, it's the little traditions that just keep everything going, right? So it's it's always nice to see. It's always nice to do whether it's like, oh, I got to wear the exact same pair of socks or it's, um, it brings that, because a lot of people view wrestling as like not a sport, but like once you're actually in it, like it, it is by far the it, it I find it it aligns with soccer. It aligns with football. It should be in the same exact categories because it's even though it's one one versus one or two versus two or whatever, it's still both competitors trying to put on like a good match. It's still two competitors with so much trust in each other to make each other look good. I it, it's just with athleticism with it and everything like it's. It's a sports. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. I've always been an advocate for chess as a sport too, but I'm even in a smaller demographic with regards to that because of people who are like, chess isn't physical. And I'm like, you play a four and a half hour game where all you can do is think constantly and not leave a board. Tell me it's not a physical thing, okay? Like, <laughs> oh, boy. I'd be asleep for like two days straight playing chess for four hours straight. Oh, holy jeez. <laughs> I don't do tournaments very often because I, I just, I don't have the stamina for that. I'm like an hour and a half a game max. Like I just can't do it. Just start pushing out shitty moves at the end and start losing. That's, that's usually my, my plan whenever I'm, I'm in a tournament. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> Every, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, I didn't choose wrestling. I love it as a sport, but where I compete, I do that in chess and Rocket League, but that's that's something else entirely just because I'm just a giant nerd. But uh, you uh, you laughed like you know what Rocket League is, which is fantastic. Oh, I know what Rocket League is. Oh, fantastic. You play? Are you a player of Rocket League? Or have I been? do not. I am a constant... Uh, during the pandemic, a couple, like, 
friends of a friends of mine, we started playing Call of Duty. Nice. So we played a couple of us played Call of Duty years ago, and then you know lives get busy. But during the pandemic, we just there's like seven of us sometimes on at the exact same time. All right, well, let's make this a nightly tradition. Nine thirty, ten o'clock. Let's get online. Let's start uh, shooting some guns. I guess. <laughs> The pandemic brought brought a lot of people close together in a very not close together kind of way, which was very, you know, some of the benefits, I suppose, right? Because I did the same thing with my friends. It was like a nightly tradition. It's like 10 o'clock, let's get on, play some Rocket League or whatever it was at the time, StarCraft or whatever, you know, whatever. We'll play something, so. No, that's fair enough. Like, like, people always say video games are so bad and all that. It's like, um, I don't know about that. It's like all the wrestling games that I get. Like, I, I think WWE 2K15 was the only one I never I never bought since, like, SmackDown vs. Raw 06. It's always been consecutive. And, um, yeah, it's just sometimes if you can't get to training or anything like that, you, I just throw the game on. I'm like, all right, what moves do I potentially want to start trying now? <laughs> That's fan- is that how you've picked out most of your moveset? You're just kind of going through like old games and you're like, what the hell is this move? Like, <laughs> uh, you know what? I just see the internet is fantastic to, to find some stuff and all that. And sometimes it, it changes up sometimes. Um, I used to make fun of John Cena a lot having like the six moves of doom or the eight moves of doom. Like that's all he did. So growing up, I just saw that. I'm like, well, this isn't exciting. We know exactly what's coming. Now that I've been in wrestling, it's like, I totally understand that now. You People just can know what to expect, <laughs> right? Because then they get invested in it. They understand who you are. When they understand who you are, they like you as a wrestler. And if you, if you know a wrestler's move set, you're clearly invested in that wrestler. I'm just saying 100 percent. so if it's like my kick gimmick that i do or if it's uh the log roll or like the rolling senton or the leg drop like people already know right and it's like you still need those familiar it's always nice to try out different stuff but it's you still need those like three or four moves that everyone knows you for now so got to keep it uh i guess Keep it OG in a way. So, which is why yeah. I love your entrance, right? Because you do that chainsaw thing, and you just like it's <laughs> nobody else does anything like that, right? Because I guess I get to this point where I think about it, like wrestlers always want something that will draw people's attention, something that will hook them, right? And everybody comes yeah. out, and they do like a point, and you're like, what's left? Because everybody's got something, right? So you do this like pop chainsaw thing while you're like screaming, you're like yeah, like it's so great. Because it's unlike everything else that other people do. So it's, and it's so much fun to watch. And I just, oh, it's one of my favorites. Oh, it's all about trying to stand out, right? Like, e- even if it's, everyone's seen like a variation of a suplex. Everyone's seen what a suplex is. But how do you make that into yours? How do you make that basic move that everyone knows? How do you make that and turn that around into like, that version is mine? And it's like, oh, he's going to do the suplex. Like, oh, right on. So it, it's the art to wrestling is very fantastic. And honestly, getting into wrestling, it really opened my eyes to like all the art like that's into it. Like this isn't some scripted thing or anything like that. No, 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 not even close. And I love wrestling for that because it's just – awesome it really is like the art to it and it, it's it's hard to describe that to people that are on the outside looking in and they don't really understand wrestling it's just it, it's an art just view it as an art and go from there i've so, always been so even... appreciative as a person who watches it right because like i'm close to the scene now obviously within the alberta scene like i get to go to a lot of different shows and i get to know a lot of people behind the scenes but the way they always speak about it it's like it's so infectious to see because like i have never gotten into the ring in my own like kind of way i would love to do a mini camp one of these days and i plan to one of these days but until then like i'm just so appreciative of the work that you've all put into telling such an amazing story because to me and this is the way i feel because wrestling is something different to everybody wrestling to me is my favorite story 
And when I can get really invested into the characters and into the people and what's actually happening, I can get myself more into a match, even if it's not like the highest quality or highest caliber match, because I'm just so invested. So when, when people yeah. put time and effort into like getting themselves better in the ring to learning how to tell a good story, how to, how to work a crowd, how to tell a promo, you know what I mean? All these different things to make me an invested into their character. It just, it makes me just be like, these guys are the best. I love what I do. Just getting to watch them. So <laughs> it's just like, honestly, like some of the best things when it comes to wrestling it nowadays, I find it's like, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my craft and everything. Um, it's just going out there and like, not worrying, like not worrying about putting it all together. No, no, no. Like I'm okay with that. I'm pretty confident in that. Now it's like, all right, well, like, for instance, um, at top talents, six, uh, I would say five, five very, very green rookies. First time out in the ring in front of people and they were nervous. And I'm like, oh, excellent. I've been there. All right. So what do you guys want to do? <laughs> and then just seeing that, uh, being in charge of that, like having like these, because because Quinn's already been already like been trained. She's I was just about to give that shout out to Quinn. I was just like, we all know that Quinn's had that first time in the ring before. So she had that more confidence going in there. Because when you said five, I was like, there was six in there. But that was not Quinn's first time. And even I knew that. Exactly. Has never actually been to a Quinn match live, unfortunately. But I even knew that. So. But yeah, no, just like guiding, uh, guiding, guiding rookies. Awesome. Loved it. Loved every single minute of it. Like it, it was, it was, and then just after too, just seeing the glow on their faces and like, like I said, a couple of them were pretty nervous and all that. And that shook off right away. They took, they took their time. It was great. I loved every minute of it, even though all six of them squashed me, but that's okay. That's okay. It was six on one. That is odds that it would be a disadvantage to anybody, even Goldberg who we've already established as being stone cold earlier in this podcast, who is invincible. So we know that six on one, it makes sense. That's totally okay. I thought the hardest thing to get over in that entire thing was those ladies that were on the side there. They were just so rambunctious that you're like, shut the hell up. Remember, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's, um, it, it, it definitely helps. Uh, it definitely helps. They get you into that. You just get angry, right? So... Well, I mean, I've already got some. That's the best thing about like, like, like the love, the love shows being heel. Same with um, uh, same with top talent there. Like, I got a couple pent up anger from work and stuff. So it's like, even from just life in general. So now it's like, hey, I'm going to just explode on you people. Right on. <laughs> I really like getting you to actually watch you work uh, heel because my first couple of shows, you obviously you came in as a face and you work face obviously beautifully. It's really hard not to. The crowd's always going to be so behind you because you have such energy and such enthusiasm and you believe yourself 100% to the point where I legitimately don't know if you are actually a lumberjack in real life. And I choose to believe that you legitimately are. So, you know what I mean? I, I Time to time, no big deal. You, yeah, you you know, you you've chopped down big trees. It's fine. I you know things about birch. You know that some of the questions that I'll probably have later on. I don't know. I don't know what it takes exactly to be a lumberjack these days. You know what I mean? I still think of like old timey, like rolling on the water, like in the black and white days. You know, so black and white days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that just kind of like came. My, out. my dad always always makes this joke. He's a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, so hey. Sorry, Pride, but this is a great joke. He's always like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. And you know what? I, I understand every year, like, everyone says we're going to win, and we never do. You know what? We've never won the cup in color TV yet. But that's how dedicated of a fan I am. I'm like, Dad, oh, <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that, but damn. <laughs> it goes back a little ways, obviously, to be a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. It really requires dedication these days. So, and I mean, like, you know, like nobody's coming in these days going like, oh, I love Toronto. They win so much, right? Oh, they're so good, right? You got to be a true fan to be a Toronto fan now. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. And you know what? For years, like with the Oilers, like 2009 to I think it was 2000 or uh, 2017. 2017, I think, was the first time they went to the playoffs since uh, 2007. Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. with the half season and against Carolina or whatever it was. Exactly. So it's like been there, lived through all that, and yet I can still be like pride <laughs> – the Toronto Maple Leafs suck. And I can say that with such confidence, even though we haven't won jack shit in so long. <laughs> I'm a Flames fan. We haven't won since the 88-89 season, so I understand. We've had our hearts broken many a time, obviously. Probably I'm... this year, too. Pardon? Probably this year, too. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I, it's Ooh. really hard for me because like all my favorite – players literally on the flames have left so i have to try to get some new ones now you know what i mean they're all gone i was like i guess i'm gonna have to uh, love uberdo now you know what i mean like i just gotta figure it out <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, rebuild i think i don't know <laughs> i don't know i was uh, it's still sad for me i still think of like my team as being like the 2004 team i still think kippersoft's in net and rig gears in our defense you know what i mean like i still go back to those days which is great but uh but anyways, let's talk a little bit about getting into the world of wrestling. Obviously, we, we just went on so many spiels there. So you, you went to your first mini camp. You were a fan of wrestling. Like, how did you figure out about wrestling that, like, independence or going on in Alberta? I'm going to go check this out. I'm going to work this camp. So um, it was – I was playing uh, – I was playing men's, men's league football in St. Albert, and we had a lineman – um by the name of justin and um his he's a wrestler so he goes by the name of wrath so i played okay. two seasons of football with wrath and I, I overheard him talking about wrestling one day and he's like, oh yeah you know talking about ladder matches and stuff i'm like whoa no one on this team talks about wrestling what's going on here and yeah he just kept on talking about like how he's a wrestler and i'm like this is awesome so one day he ended up telling me that there's a mini camp, uh, May long, May long weekend of 20 of 2017. No, sorry. 2016. Sorry. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to sign up on a whim, go from there and did the camp the first day. It was a two day camp. I did the, I, I did like the first day and uh, I, I was just doing some certain stuff that it just kind of flowed with me. And a couple people, um, I think it was like a hammer lock and like how I positioned my hand and stuff. I was doing it to Chris Parrish and he, he turns around. He's like, who taught you this? I'm like, no one. I just, this is, this just feels natural. He's like, that's the proper way. I'm like, whoa, cool. All right. This is coming on. Bumping was super easy. Like everything just being a fan for so many years just seemed like I, don't know, I was just watching it. I didn't realize that it was like training tapes now. So did the, did the two day mini camp, um, that same weekend, I went to my first RCW show and Oh goodness. I think Mentalo was there. Um, we were, were I went to the bathroom and I saw a poster and I'm like, too cool Scorpio. I'm like, Whoa, buddy that I came with, he's not too cool. Like he doesn't, he doesn't know any, uh, anything really about wrestling. So I'm freaking out in the bathroom. I'm like, Dude, too cool Scorpio's here. And then I zip my pants up. Cause it's kind of weird, right? Like you well, can't really be very be... excited in the bathroom with your pants down. I mean, it's usually for a different type of show, but I, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's totally understandable. Right. <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> But yeah, that's that's when I met Thad for the first time. The main event was Tuchel Scorpio against Bobby Sharp for the uh, RCW uh, uh, Canadian title. And like, that's really all I can really remember of that show. But yeah, it was first indie show. And then I started going to um, uh, the next show I went to was a PWA show that had the only match I can remember was AJ Styles versus... Uh, uh, Marky Mark. So I was like, AJ Styles, right on. Got a chance to meet him after the show and stuff. And I'm like, wow, I'm taller than you? Damn. <laughs> 
Yeah, That's gonna feel then, good. Um, I'm always shorter than everybody when I meet them. They're always like, "Oh, you're you're shorter than I expected you to be." I go, "I'm like, I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but thank you that you're all." You know? <laughs> I guess I present myself bigger, but I'm really not that tall. So <laughs> it, it's just nice to kind of see, right? So you see all these people on TV, and it's like absolute giants, and then you meet meet them in real life in like regular shoes and stuff. And it's like whoa we're like the same height this is awesome like gives you that it's, confidence it, like, it, i could do something like that then i'm like i could fit in right exactly what i'm talking about i'm like hey might as well because everyone always talks like wwe is always about like at least the vince mcmahon era was always about the giants the six foot five six foot six freaks and just muscled right out. And it's like, well, what about your op- Billy Gunn was considered a smaller guy, which is an insane thought. <laughs> it's just insane. Right? He's like the biggest guy. He's the most built guy in like uh, AEW. So it's like, whoa. <laughs> He's a massive human being to the point where you go back and you watch the attitude. Area, you're like, how big are these people? Like, honestly, there must be like legitimate giants, which a lot of them were. So... <laughs> Oh, exactly. So when you actually meet the giant, like a giant, it's like, whoa, okay, damn. <laughs> so you're, so you've done your two day mini camp. You're now addicted, clearly, because like you know you finished your May long week in mini camp. Then how did you go into actual training? You're like, okay, well, clearly I'm hooked. My back hurts. This is my, me for the rest of my life now. So how did that happen in your head exactly? Um, so I, I took a, I took a break. Because uh, at, at the time, I was working this real greasy mid-shift uh, at a glass company. Okay. And so I never started training till I believe it was November 22nd of that year. So it was always constantly on my mind, always wanted to do it, but I couldn't find time during the week to like commit. So I remember going for lunch. And uh, I went to like this, uh, the Safeway or yeah, it was Safeway over on like the Northeast or Northwest side of Edmonton. And I bumped into Cody Blade and he's like, Hey Dylan, what? (laughs) Whoa. Oh, Hey, Hey man, how's it going? He's like, Hey man, like when are you coming back to training? You know, you remember who, what my name is. Okay, cool. So right there, I, made arrangements at work that i can actually start training during the week so um yeah november 22nd i started uh training at uh, monster pro wrestling under uh sean dunster and phil fond so hey there you go there's some names that are recognizable around here how long did it come around until you became lumberjack larry woods because as far back as i can remember listening to the edmonton scene kind of coming in late 2016 or early 17 lumberjack larry woods was this name that appeared in edmonton around that time so like did it come pretty immediately for you then um start training in november my first match was february 4th in the main event of an mpw show um oh for goodness sake i can't remember what uh what the show was but there was it, it was like a, a scramble match in a way so like two people would start it was one, two, three, four. It was a six-man match, but four people were on the outside of the ring. The Eliminator. The Eliminator. That's what they called it. Two people would start in the middle of the ring, and they would tag out. So that same night, it was me and Eddie Rude making our debuts, and we went up against Chris Parrish, um, Maniac, Jude Dawkins, Mm, this is going to kill me. I don't remember who the sixth person was, but it was, um, yeah, it was just very surreal, like actually getting out there and like actually just having so much fun with it. And I, like, I'll, I'll never forget. It's like very first match, never forget it. Hearing the crowd, hearing like, Hey, this is like my lifelong dream. Like if, if, I was gone the next day. I'm happy. <laughs> Mike in chat said Kid Cyrus. Was that the fourth person in there? Oh, Kid Cyrus. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That's great. That Mike is such a knowledgeable person when it comes around the Edmonton scene. Like he just like, it's like you just say what match you were there. And he's just like, these were all the people in that match. That's crazy. 
<laughs> He's like, I have that footage exactly. There you go. That's amazing. We love Mike here. Um, so, so you start wrestling then in like so you you said it was like an eliminator match. So did the lumberjack then spawn from that match at that point? Um, pretty much. So uh, when I first got when I first got started into wrestling, you know, come up the gimmick. So um, I had a uh, one of my best friends growing up. Um, when he was 18, he was diagnosed with, oh goodness, I always mess this up. So my apologies for always messing this up, but he was diagnosed with either, I'm pretty sure it was MS. So either MS or ALS, but I'm pretty sure it was MS. And I, I, I remember, uh, trying to have something with his name. So like try to come up with a gimmick, like, uh, his name is Kobe. So I tried coming up with like Kobe Bennett's. The rancher Kobe Bennett, because I was really watching the ranch at the time. So I'm like, oh, cool. Like, cowboy gimmick. I'm from a small town. I love country. So let's try it out. I kept getting shot down and down. I had a bigger beard than what I have now. And he's like, oh, you look like a lumberjack. We'll call you Lumberjack Larry. At first, I absolutely hated it. Like, this is stupid. How can I give like any sort of like recognition recognition to one of my dearest friends? Like, th this sucks. But then, there comes out the artistic style, which I had no idea at the time, where people were helping me create a move set, create a finisher, and um, I'll never forget this either. So, when Every time I go out to the ring, I always wear that. Um, I always wear that hat, that uh, that plaid hat. So I remember going to see Kobe right before right before my first match, and um, he kind of it was me, another another friend. We went to go visit him. His dad was there too, so it was it was a nice little visit. Um, he found out that I was I started wrestling and all that, so it, it was it was nice. Like he, he's pretty he was pretty excited. So he kind of looks at his dad, looks over to his uh, closet and just nods his head because with uh, that terrible disease, your motor functions are affected. So um, he looks over, lifts his head up, and his dad's like, oh, well, Lumberjack needs a proper hat. Grabs the hat, puts it right on my head, and I'm like, this is I, – I can't. I can't. And, uh, yeah, both of them are like, no. No, you have to. So, okay, cool. Uh, been unfortunately that uh, Easter of that year, he ended up passing away. But uh, yeah, that uh, that hat is very near and dear to my heart. So it's he never got a chance to make it out to a show. Um, at the time, sh I think MPW and Shaw had had kind of a deal going on, so they were playing like. I think it was like 10, 11 o'clock on like whatever, sh whatever Shaw station there was, they'd always play like MPW matches and whatnot. So right. I think he might've got a chance to watch, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But that's why that's, uh, that hat is so important. So as soon as uh, I get back after the match, I get to the back and right away, I'm like, where's the hat? Boom. There we go. Good. Whatever. I lose a shirt. I lose an elbow pad. I don't really give a shit. Just that hat. So, that yeah. is such another heartwarming story there. I'm so sorry to hear right. about your friend, but it's nice that you get to bring a piece of like who you are and who he was into the ring every time you get to wrestle because, like you said, you wanted to do it for him and for the fact that he was able to give you, you know, that hat that's become so iconic with your character because I can imagine it clearly without even having to think about it. Like, I know exactly <laughs> what the hat looks like. So... That's great, and I love that. Yeah, exactly. So anybody who's listening, if that hat, if you ever see that on the floor, like it gets kicked to the side, you make sure it's safe. You give it to the ref, and you just say, you make sure this hat is safe. We all know we're here for you, Larry. Much appreciated for that, because, uh, yeah, if that hat ever went missing, I would probably come a little unglued, and we don't want to see that, because we've seen unglued Larry in the ring. Oh, I don't want to see him out of the ring like that. So, yeah. There you go. 
All right, well, we've already been going for like 40 minutes, so I have to switch into the Q&A section here because I could just keep talking forever here, but uh, I know the fans are going to ask some pretty fun questions. I Legitimately, I feel like we could just literally talk about like 90s TV all day. We haven't even gotten into like Pinky <laughs> and the Brain, like the fun side of things, like Pinky and the Brain and stuff like that. We probably both grew up on Rugrats, you know what I mean? So, Animaniacs, Rugrats, sticking around. Oh, sticking around oh. was great. Oh, uh, Holy mackerel! <laughs> Scrabbly! <laughs> oh man, yeah, I remember sticking around. Like I was saying, Pinky and the Brain, I got them right here. Like they're always like right beside me and close. Just because I, I you know what I mean? I feel like I'm both of their personalities mixed together. I'm a, I, I, I'm a very analytical person and then I'm also a dope, so it works out really well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before I do move into that, though, I got to ask, because you did grow up in my era, favorite video game growing up, because, like, that one has always been, like, such a confrontational thing for so many different people. Everybody had a different console. They had different tastes. So what was your game growing up? I was always, like, Nintendo. So growing up with the Nintendo 64, um, oh, geez, that's a tough one. I grew up with like GoldenEye and all that. Honest, I would have to say it's either um, I can I can play it every day. Uh, I would say probably Banjo Kazooie. Mm. Like it was just the music was great. The 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 uh, really not much of a story. I go around collecting jigsaw puzzles, but I mean it, it just. I'd say Banjo Kazooie. I mean that sure. it was a quite a common theme on the 64 Banjo Kazooie Mario 64 Donkey Kong 64 they all did the exact same thing with a different skin essentially so right <laughs> I understand entirely and then also as a giant GoldenEye nerd myself I'm always like oh somebody knows GoldenEye we got to play GoldenEye one of these days I have 3 wow. Nintendo 64s in my office right here so I could play GoldenEye when I need to you know what I mean? It's ready. It's in. It's in that one over there. It's it's ready to go all the time. Because I'm like, yeah, golden eye. But who plays it really? Right? These days, nobody plays it these days. I'm waiting till my daughter is like old enough to have like a little bit of like you know like skills and like abilities to actually like play a game. And then when she's there, I'm like, oh, I'm teaching you golden eye. You don't understand. We're playing on the complex license to kill. We're going. <laughs> you no, know, no, no. Here's the thing. So real quick, if I ever have kids. And they want the latest video game console, like uh, PlayStation 10. Who knows? Um, I'm going to take at least two games, maybe three, of every system that I've ever owned. And I'm going to go, you have to earn that. So you're going to play these two to three games, and you're going to beat them. Not 100%. Like, if there's side missions, whatever. You meet, you beat the main story, right on. But you got to beat these ones and work your way up. So 64, GameCube, PlayStation 2, 3, kind of go from there. So I'm with you. I, I've actually said this exact same thing to my girlfriend. I'm like, you don't understand. When my girlfriend, my daughter is old enough, she will have weekly lessons on like old games. Because when I went to college, I made video games for a living. I spent five years of my life making video games. I'm like, this is important to me. I will teach her all about video games and like the lineage of why things are so good these days, right? Like they're not going to get into the most recent Pokemon game until they play blue or red and they figure out why, right? They're going to have to figure they're going to have to go and get trading cables and find another friend. If they want to get all 150, they're going to have to trade right at the beginning for Bulbasaur. You're going to have to get your and we're going to have to figure out how to go like the fuchsia and get like missing no. We'll teach them all about how to do this. <laughs> exactly you got it you got to do the missing code because so many people don't understand that code anymore and it's like what oh go play your emerald whatever but yeah yeah if, I, if my daughter damn. cannot recite for me the konami code when she's like 10 years old i might have to disown her but you know we'll figure it out when, <laughs> by then she should know better you know what i mean <laughs> All right, let's move straight into the questions here. We've already got a bunch kind of filling up here. So if anybody has questions and they want to uh, ask anything about uh, Lumberjack Larry here. Uh, oh, actually, my screen just disappeared here. There we go. I fixed it up here. We're good. Uh, ask some questions below, uh, and our mods will send them over. The first question from Mike the Ref. How does it feel to get worked by six graduates Thursday night? Good question. Well, I mean. They graduated. Um... They weren't amateurs, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> they at least knew what they were doing um yeah it uh it 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 uh it sucks but it was good 
because that's the future. They're comfortable doing these things right on. If I can say, if they can go back and go, oh yeah, we beat the shit out of Lumberjack Larry Woods, right on. Like yeah. That's something that's already in their repertoire. It already pays to go to top talent, I suppose, like right there. A hundred percent. They've like, already got Lumberjack Larry laid out in a ring. That's already in their repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> just give them the confidence to uh, to continue on with 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 this uh with this career with this life with this with this um um with this dream to help them accomplish that right on i'm, I'm happy with it so the work over was great what's new <laughs> yeah and like we've already established it was six on ones those are hard odds for anybody so like it's not really a big issue all right a question here from shout and this is a question that gets asked all the different times, so I love this one. So what impact did the all-time classic movie Ready to Rumble starring Sting have on your wrestling career? You know, it, it, it was just looking at it as, like, it, uh, being at the top, falling all the way down, and then working your way back into, like, what you – what you can like working your way back up. So like I had both my, uh, both my ACLs, uh, I had both ACL surgeries. So it's like having that, having that King, uh, come back, having that Rocky come back like that. Uh, I, I took a lot of inspiration from both of them, even though like one's more of a, more of like a, a comedy and all that, but you find inspiration where you can to try to work your way back up. So, Took a lot of. Uh, I watched that quite a bit, along with Rocky, when I was rehabbing both my uh, both my knees on separate occasions. But I understand Rocky Four definitely was a comedy, so I mean it's easy to laugh at it. So, oh, <laughs> 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 sorry, I make the joke. It's one of my favorite Rockies, but of course it's quite campy. But uh, I would. That's one of the things I was uh, making the joke about today on Twitter. I was just like, "Do you run up mountains with like logs, uh, like pieces of wood, as part of your training regimen?" Very a la Rocky. Like, is that part of it? You know what? I um, I've always wanted to do like a Rocky. Uh, like, I've always wanted to have a montage, and it's because of Rocky. I've always wanted to have his workouts because it's Rocky. When I was coming back from my very first. Uh, uh, ACL surgery. I remember like actually like running through like knee deep snow, and it was like, oh cool, this is probably the worst friggin' idea I've ever had. It's literally at that Rocky time. for at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta find some big Russian to try to beat up. Yeah, there you go. Well, we'll find one. This is Alberta wrestling. We'll just pull one out if we need one. We'll be good with it. We'll find it out. <laughs> well, wait. wait. If they're Russian, they're probably not going to claim they're Russian, right? That's probably not right now. I don't think these days. Like, I think 2022 yeah. is... Eh. But you know what I mean? They might still go, like, former Soviet Union at this point, but I don't know if we'll do Russia today. Who knows? It's an interesting time. <laughs> day by day, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I, I love that. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Rocky, so when I get to hear... Obviously, because we're, like, apparently the same person when it comes to the entertainment side of mediums growing up. <laughs> So obviously you grew up loving Rocky. Uh, and for the same reason, I'm going to say this because you talked about loving montages. I made, I used to make like retro video game reviews on YouTube. And one of my episodes, uh, which was a review of the Nintendo game, The Adventures of Bayou Billy, I did a montage of me doing something in that review because I was so addicted to montages because of shows, movies like Rocky. And I was just like, I really wanted to be in a montage for something. So I made a montage and it was I timed it to music and it was so much fun. So I can, it was worth doing, do it for sure. Get a friend with a camera, just do it. <laughs> A hundred percent. Well, who, who knows? Maybe uh, Tales from the Undercard. We'll, we'll have some sort of montage here soon. If so. you need somebody, to I'll come. I went to film school. I, I'm very happy to help with whatever you need. So, uh, Well, I guess the rats will give you a call once we come back to Calgary then. There we or go. if you're in Edmonton, for sure. I've been up there a few times lately, which has been really awesome. So, uh, But, uh, all right, here's a fun one. Okay, Wrestling Rodeo question. Any thoughts on WWE 2K22 GM mode blatantly stealing your Lumberjack gimmick with Tim Burr? Oh, so funny story. Uh, I constantly play universe mode, so I'm slowly getting back into GM mode. So 
Um, I will let you know once I get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know if we have to file a restraining order or a cease and desist, I should say, to WWE there. Because you're like, I am the lumberjack in wrestling, okay? I feel like that was a Vince thing. So, um, I don't know. I guess I'm coming after Vince McMahon. I mean, you wouldn't be the only person these happens. days, I suppose. So, I guess that helps your odds. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he'll settle. Give me like, <laughs> maybe he'll settle and just give me a bunch of money, right? Like, I mean, that also up. wouldn't be out of the odds these days. All right, next question <laughs> from Show: When are we getting Rad's Pogs? Fuck yes, I want some Pogs that are Rad's. That would be amazing. Holy yo, shit! Yo, yo. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm um, uh, I'm gonna write that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. You know, because. That- sick i've worked in large format printing i'm sure i could just figure out what the type of material the pogs were made from and then all you do is you print mine and you just get them cut out and fantastic then you've just got pogs you and me will talk we'll figure it out i, I i'm sure i can uh, figure 100%. it out perfect all right uh, rats pogs would be so cool get some slammers made up oh my gosh uh, oh we got plenty of those already so <laughs> another question because well, apparently we're a lot of the same person growing up do you rem- miss and remember so delicious candies and why don't they make those anymore because they were the best oh. thing in the world oh yes i do so the green bottles were always the best you had the root beer bottles you had the, the orange bottles the cherry like bottles all- everything absolutely the float that came in those threes absolutely i missed the fuck out of those they haven't made them in over 15 years and i still crave them oh. And they had two packages. They had the purple package, which was always the best one. Then they had the red package. I don't remember what they tasted like. I think it came with like little like, I, I don't think the purple bottles were in it or the green bottles. It was like very selective, like different flavors at that time. But remember when mom would always get like the orange box. I'm like, oh, or sorry, the red box. I'm like, oh, the red box. Whenever cool. I would go on a field trip, I would make sure that I brought um, what are the wagon wheels because I couldn't get all the time. I couldn't get um, uh, so delicious. So what I would do is I bring wagon wheels because that was the ultimate tradable candy at uh, this, like anytime you're on a field trip. So if you had a wagon wheel, you could get anything you wanted. So I would find the person who had like two packs of so delicious and be like, let's fucking do it. So I could get all the so delicious and I could just like hide in my corner eating my little purple bottles as you would say, right? Cause I fucking love those. See, see, I love how you bring up wagon wheels, like wagon wheels. I used to, I used to eat those all the time. Um, and you know what? I've been trying, like I, I have to gift. I heard a rumor, like this is number of years ago. Um, Right after I had my very first match with, with MRB, um, so like, I I heard a rumor that he loves wagon wheels, like absolutely loves them. So you know what? Um, I mean, like, if, 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 if there's anyone listening that you know no know, knows Michael or anything like that, like, he loves wagon wheels. He loves giving that. He loves receiving those delicious, delicious snacks. So. That's great Just news saying, to know myself welcome. as well because I always like to approach people and make sure they're my friends. So now I'm going to start coming with wagon wheels. Great tip there from the lumberjack there. I also know if I go up to Mars, i got to bring them carrots apparently because this is like a whole thing. <clears throat> or if I'm... Because if, it's a carrot? No, because apparently he brings carrots to every show. We, I learned this during one of my interviews here. Like People will bring him carrots and he eats carrots all the time on the day of shows because they're filling and they're healthy for you, but they're not like too filling that it would like make problems. So the dude brings carrots to every show. So, you, or if you hang out with uh, Tony Machete, just bring him like 15 pounds of McDonald's. Apparently he'll eat all of that. So the things I have learned during this podcast or this interview, I've, I, I've heard plenty of, I, I, yeah, I've, I've hung out with him a couple of times, not in that capacity, but it usually it always, Usually with with Tony Machete, it always turns out to be, God damn it, Machete, or God damn it, Tony, <laughs> from Vic. <laughs> uh, we all love Tony. He's it's great. He's the best. He's also like the most sculpted person alive for a person who apparently sleeps all the time and eats copious amounts of McDonald's. The guy still comes out like he was like sculpted in marble. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Hundred percent. I wish I could I look half as good as he does. <laughs> I just find this whole wrestling world, honestly, like it's uh, it's all like quite a brotherhood. I mean, like sometimes 
you have spats with your family, you have spats with your brothers. But honestly, in the end, we're all there together. We've all know each other. Like, at least with me, like, what's the point of holding a grudge? Like, oh, you you got some beef with each other? Cool. Let's let's go talk over there. Let's let's. Hey, what's going on? How come you don't like me, or how come I don't like you? Whatever, right? Like, let's get past it. Let's be professionals. Let's be a family again, right? So, oh, I'm with you 100. percent I've always tried to make the positivity anywhere I go. I, I hope I haven't made any enemies. As far as I know, everybody seems to like me, which is a a rarity apparently coming into this. But as far as I know, I've made people like me. As long as I continue to talk about YTV in the 90s, I think everybody will get along with me. That seems to be a very common factor for a lot of people to start mentioning things like you said, like. Animaniacs and start doing like the nations of the world thing if you can remember half of that something like that you know what I mean but oh, Animaniacs was amazing such a good show I mean it, oh, it's so good all right uh, next quick question here from shout if you haven't yet why haven't you appropriated Kenny Omega's chainsaw spot I'm also trying to think about it off the top of my head but I can't quite think of it I think I think I can uh, I think I, I think I know what they're talking about um I, you know what I so whenever I started doing like the log roller I wanted to like kind of hop up onto the uh, up onto the corner and do like a split legged moonsault but I don't have the confidence to do that and then I started paying attention more to like Kenny Omega and I noticed he did something like that and I'm like okay the fact that I'm doing like the the rolling senton I'm like um all right all right you find inspiration when you don't even realize that it's already put out there so now i'm like i usually if i see someone like at least i try to do it if some big name is already using like a certain move or anything like that then i'm like oh i'm gonna back up i gotta make my own kind of deal so <laughs> well i mean you don't also want to take everybody's like chainsaw spot or something related to the woods right i mean you got to be your own person at the end of the day as well and you've already got some really awesome wood-related things. Oh, exactly. So, <laughs> um, All right, here's a fun one. Uh, you were stranded on a desert island with one wrestler you know. Uh, who is that wrestler? One wrestler that yeah, I know. No. Oh, So I guess goodness. you can't just say, like, some sort of pilot wrestler that wrestles somewhere. Like, <laughs> Oh, okay. You know what? You know what? Because he was like, just, he's just a solid person. And, um, I went on a Northern tour and if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for him and another wrestler out of BC named Sloan, I probably would have jumped in the ice and like be done with it. Um, uh, That's Bobby grim. Shank. I oh, would be Shank. Bobby Shank. Oh, dude. Like, I a solid standout dude like no offense to like anyone else everyone else is good but bobby shank holds a special place because i would have jumped in the ice of northern manitoba if it wasn't for well partly partly for him so well yeah. the thing about shank is if he did he'd probably be tall enough to get in there and still grab you and pull you out because he's just so damn tall i understand entirely like just watching that guy wrestle he comes out like some people just have charisma like oozing out of them no matter what they do bobby shank is literally walking charisma no matter what he is doing i love that about shank right like it just that northern tour him and i just just a standout person a hundred percent and like getting to know him a hell of a lot more even though like we're provinces away i haven't seen the i haven't seen the guy in like two two years ish but you know what um i can i i, I can strike up a conversation with the guy and it feels like like we've seen each other yesterday or the day before like it, it's just he's such a standout dude so yeah and like you said, if he's on an island, he'd be tall enough to get the coconuts without having to knock a tree or something like that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of advantages. He's very tall. He's I should just make that attention to everybody. He's like six foot seven or something like that. He's like ridiculously tall. And then his hair gives him like another couple of inches, which is great. 
and you know what? He's gonna have syrup somewhere. Oh, he, like, like I've seen that guy chug so much syrup. I, you know, what the sad part is like I have gotten so limited times to get to see him like like visually like in person, like I like I did prior to getting to see you in Edmonton more. But every time I see him online, like him or Travis, like obviously is a part uh, of uh, sweet and tasty, like always just chugging back their syrup and stuff. Fucking love it. <laughs> Actually, I pitched an idea. I pitched an idea to to both Travis and uh, and Shinky there. I was like, "Hey, yeah, you got sweet and tasty now." Because I got I got the plaid shorts. I'm like, "Hey, how about some sour, sweet, tasty, sour?" There you go. Hey, there you go. Some ideas for anybody traveling through. I, here's the thing: you would be so good with them because when they come out together, they're super charismatic. So you would just be out there perfectly fitting with them. I would love to see these things. I, you know what? It's kind of weird because like you get your own like fantasy booking when you're in my own head, right? Like there's, I, you already know who's established in Alberta. You know who's teaming with who. But you gotta go. You're like, what would be a fun pair? Uh, you're like, who am I gonna start pairing together? And that's one <laughs> that I, I'm now now thinking about. Gonna I'm gonna be like, yeah, I could see this there would be a lot of fun sweet tar- sour and tasty mm. you should come up right? with it you should do specifically the blueberry syrup because then you can kind of like separate yourself from them <laughs> uh all but, right and like the whole, the whole syrup chugging con- the thing like it just reminds me of super troopers like i i love that movie start to finish i can watch that movie every day until i'm gone and honestly like that whole syrup chugging contest that like closer to the beginning of the movie i was howling the entire time like it still gets to me this day so <laughs> well we all know that you need to have big powerful manly lips in order to get a good <laughs> suck going on and we all know that at the end of the day when i get hungry i just want to go to shenanigans you know we all we all understand these things <laughs> but do you boys like Mexico? <laughs> Do you boys like Mexico? Woo! <laughs> officer, we can't pull over anymore. We're already pulled over enough. <laughs> yeah, we can't pull over anymore, officer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen Super Troopers so many damn times as well. It's one of those movies you could just put on a repeat, and I probably have so many times. Oh, so good. Uh, so good. Oh. You probably also were got addicted to movies like Tropic Thunder and stuff, like when they would come out. Like they're just so much fun. Um, Step Brothers, you know what I mean? Like these oh, movies that Step just Brothers were classic. Sweet. The other guys. I feel like you were addicted to all these movies, Ooh. like I was. Now, uh, that is my go-to date movie. I always put on the other guys because it's like, oh, it's not too serious, and there's a lot of comedy. Mark Wahlberg is on it. Same with Will Ferrell, like. Both those guys mesh so well that who doesn't like Mark Wahlberg or uh, Will Ferrell? Like, honestly, that's the best Wrong people. Wrong people is the answer. My brother and I will still literally look at each other in moments where we're, like, not sure about something. We just look at each other. We're just, like, aim for the bushes. Like, we just say (laughs) it. I was like, fuck it, hey, for the bushes. I did my first desk palm. That's, <laughs> that's, not, a thing. That? that's not a thing. They were so convincing in their argument. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I could, that's another one I just added to the list. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right, a question here. God, we're just moving through these so slowly because this is so much fun. How do you feel about the night you were in the ring as people were throwing garbage at Mitch? Complete nuclear here, and it'll cost you... Your little Larry's. Hold on, that was coming from Mike. I hope I answered the, said this correctly. Do you understand what I said? Yeah, that's the night that I won the MPW heavyweight title off of Sean Martins. Okay. And Mitch came out. We celebrated. He kicked me in the dick. Uh, he gave me, at the time, was his new finisher, uh, a neck breaker. And he grabs the title puts it underneath my face, slams my face on it, grabs a chair, looks around, and just concertos me. I'm out. And garbage started getting thrown into the ring. And I, the funny thing is, I loved every minute of it because it was such a huge turn, I find. Like, it, it was the, it, it was the moment that turned Mitch heel fantastic and i still remember at that time um it was a couple days prior to that show that uh what happened 
I saw, I, I read an article of how when the NWO was formed, when Hulk Hogan came out and they were just throwing garbage into that WCW ring, um, Scott Hall ended up saying like he's never like witnessed something like that before. So the fact that garbage was getting thrown into the ring because the people were so invested, the people cared so much and they were so pissed at that like that's still like one of the top moments of like my wrestling career right there because that that's something that scott hall he was in wrestling for a number of years and never never uh had that happen to him and i'm like i've been wrestling for two years already three years maybe at that time but and it's happening to me already this is awesome like such a surreal moment. I'll never forget it till like, I'll never forget it. Scott Hall is literally part of two of my favorite moments in wrestling history. And because they, they stood out so much, literally with the formation of the NWO as being like one of the most nuclear heated moments in wrestling. He was a part of that as well as putting over X Pac or the one, two, three kid at the time or the kid at the time with the, with yeah. that, like where he gets that crazy pin and he didn't realize like he put over this kid and like people didn't see that shit at the time. Right. I go back and I watch that all the time. I'm like Scott Hall, total fucking genius in wrestling. Like seriously, he was a part oh. of two of the greatest moments. He's just a. There you go. At the same time, too, it's. Uh, I don't know the. I don't know what happened. I don't know who was properly supposed to go over. Maybe it was supposed to be one, two, three, kid. Maybe they switched on the fly. I don't know. But that's still like a big vet putting over this this up and coming rookie. Like it's. Well, it totally nice made to Sean Waltman because he was already putting on really good matches, but then to have that over Scott Hall to get into a program with Scott Hall to be start re getting renamed the One Two Three Kid, you know what I mean? And then eventually just yeah. like going from there and becoming his own person and becoming X Pac and oh shit, I was so happy. He's such a good. He was so he's such a good wrestler. I will joining like the two biggest factions in pro wrestling history, like NWO DX, like unreal. Yeah. Like, but it's, at the time, everyone was part of NWO. WCW and WO, absolutely. Like, that was the thing everybody was. It came over to the WWE, then everybody started getting it. was like, NWO came a little bit uh, crowded there by the end. But like the first like 10 members, it was when it was really solid. <laughs> when he was named Six or whatever. <laughs> right? Like... <laughs> Too literal there. All right, uh, next question here from the Omen fan. Uh, what is your favorite gift a fan has ever given you? Well, um, funny that has been brought up because uh, I just received like this past this past Friday, I received this uh, monster truck, and uh, it, it it's it's called like the lumberjack. Oh, nice! So, and that's from Eric. So oh, well, there you go. Well, he was probably always asking getting that clout there, Eric. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Eric it's is really nice. Transformer collection. I've got a couple of things that I've had from Eric. I don't have them beside me. He's given me some ducks that I've collected, which have been very nice. And every time I get to see him, he always gets to bring this uh, pig that we got to see. Like, first time I ever got to meet him was at, like, the first clandestine show. So every time oh, and, like, okay. we got this thing called Porky, which is this pig. So every time he sees me, he brings Porky. And I'm just like, hey, there he is, Porky. So, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where it's tradition and it's really lovely. Oh, 100%, right? Like, it, it's – and then right there, it's just, like – being part of the wrestling world and having that connection with uh with with other fans or anything like that like that's that's what's the other re like what's what, what's one of the main importance when it comes to wrestling it's the people yeah making those connections so, I mean, if you're making an impact to if you're making any sort of impact to people where either they're giving you gifts or they're inspired by you to do something, maybe it's not wrestling related, but just inspired. Like that's what I, that's what I loved about wrestling during the pandemic. Like it was life for a lot of people sucked. Lots of people were stressed about everything. And you know what? Like being able to go out there for two, two and a half, maybe three hours, go out there, entertain, boo me, flip me off, uh, cheer for me, like whatever. You don't have to worry about the world at that moment. Like, go and it's relax. It's an escape. Don't Everybody can problem. kind of lose, lose themselves in it and just get lost in a story, not think about their real lives for a little while. 
Exactly. It was the only form of entertainment that you can go to live. You can go to a movie theater. No, 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 no. We're a multi-billion dollar corporation. We can't do that. Hey, but your local wrestling show, hey, they're putting on a show. So, hey, let's go see that. And I think that even brought in more people, more interested people, because they wanted to just get out. Maybe they're not necessarily a wrestling fan, but now they are. Hey, let's go to a wrestling show. But right even on, having to right. adapt with that, right? Like how wrestling even became in like, I'm going to call it like the digital, like the TV screen era, right? Like people had to come up with new ways to try to like make themselves seem interesting, right? When you don't have that crowd there, it's hard to tell a good story. And like cinematic matches came out of that. There was a lot of cool things that people did during that yeah. time to really stand out. So like you got to see really creative people do stuff during the pandemic because they were the ones who were on social media is like killing it. And because they made themselves stand out and it's such a hard time to stand out. And that's just a different part of the art. How can I be more exposed? How am I going to get out there a little bit more, right? So it's just, we have all these platforms that sometimes people don't use to 100% of their ability. And I know like social media, like I'm very bad at it, but I try to throw out there as much stuff as I possibly can from time to time, but it'll happen. I'll get around to it. There you go. All right, I got a couple more questions here so we can wrap these up, but these are some really good questions here from Tech. Wreck-It Ralph steals your favorite axe. What wrestling move do you take, or what wrestling move does it take to defeat him and get your axe back? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. You know what? It, oh, wow. I watched Wreck-It Ralph once. He's a very big man. He's quite so, big. Uh, He's John C. Riley though, so you must love him because of Step Brothers, so. <laughs> Talladega Nights, like it, 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 it's go. it's gonna it's gonna hurt hurting him, but uh, that my goodness, that would definitely have to be a snap German right into a light drop. So, oh, it's a combo! I, I was like, this sounds a like a pretty familiar combo that I might be familiar with from like the late eighties, <laughs> early nineties. <90s. laughs> As or you, you know talked what? about, knowing certain move sets makes you invested in a character. <laughs> Right? Or you know what? Maybe just grab it a good old steel chair right to the head. Pop. Kind of like what I did to uh, Michael Allen, Richard Clark uh, a couple or two months ago. So, As they say, the longest name in wrestling, or as Adam Ryder called him, Michael Four Names, which I just absolutely loved. And... <laughs> Michael Foreskin. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't say well... it. Don't get mad at me, Mark. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> He's terrified. Yeah. That guy is so built and jacked. I'm not a wrestler, so I don't have that confidence you have. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's pretty big, but you know what? He's, he's a softy. He's a softy. He was um, actually um, – he, he was one of the top people to do the one-chip challenge. Don't worry. I got your back. I So Even I heard about this. I can't wait for the footage to come out. I'm a huge fan of spicy food. Like, I have, like, Carolina Reapers and stuff upstairs if I ever need to put them in my food. So, like, I've always been, like, I'm just, like, one of these days. People, someone's going to challenge me to something spicy. I'm going to be, like, oh, I'm going to destroy you. Trust me. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That sucks. That honestly sucks so much. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, wait till the footage comes out. And then you'll see all the woos and the let's fucking go. I, I got to Wait, see the I smallest think? bit, and all I really got to see was Stephen Crow hopping back and forth super quickly, and that was like all I got to see. So, well, well, well see. he, you know what? I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. He was the first person with bare hands when we were specifically told not to use our bare hands. He was bare hands, chip in, chomp, 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 swallow. So, Crow, you finished the first chip with your bare hands. Don't touch your eyes and don't freak out about it. <laughs> uh, next question here from Shout. Banjo Kasui is great, but have you ever heard of its spiritual successor, Yoko, or Ukulele? That's what it was. Oh, I, yes. I have that downloaded on my PlayStation. And every chance I get, like, if I'm looking for a game, I always pop that on all the time. It's not as big as Banjo Kazooie, like, multiple worlds but you know what it is such a good game the music though the play style just the energy the vibe of it is so banjo kazooie i instantly fell in love with it as soon as i found out what it was so 
yes, I played the living hell out of that game. I love spiritual successors, especially when they're like, we're trying to capture the essence of what made the first one great. But for me, like, I grew up being such a huge Mega Man fan, like, especially the ones on the Nintendo. Like, but like two and three are, like, like perfect to me, in my opinion. So when they're like, we're coming out with this game called Mighty Number no. 9, it's the spiritual successor to Mega Man, I got so excited for it, but then I was so let down by the game. I'm like, this doesn't feel like my Mega Man games. I want them back. Really? Yeah, it wasn't as good. I mean, it was fun. It played more like a Mega Man X, but then it, even then it didn't feel quite as good as Mega Man X did. But uh, yeah, for me, I was yeah. See, you shout right there. Mighty Number no. Nine sucked. There you go. Exactly right. So sad. My... You know what? I I I don't even remember hearing about that game. I know you're not um... missing out. I'll just be honest with you. Play the original Mega Man's if you like those. They're still so much better. All right, we have some questions here from B Rat, which is always a fun time. So here, oh, here we go. All right, how good are you at the axe throwing game at the rec room? Oh damn! So I haven't played yet. Um, if this is coming out to be a challenge, then hell yeah! Next month on the thirtieth, we are definitely doing this. Uh, not after or before a chip challenge, or definitely not after a chip challenge, but. Um, yeah, no. Honestly, I've never, I never actually tossed axes before. I tossed uh, um, throwing knives, kind of similar, but a little, little top heavier. I've this is what I've learned about B Rat. He's a very competitive person, which is amazing. Yep. I love people like B Rat. Um, he's really good at basketball. Like this is one thing he will let you know. So I, he's like, let's play this like uh, Connect Four uh, like basketball game that they have at uh, the rec room because he was playing Stephen Crow and he beat Stephen Crow and I was like, oh, I'll play you. So I played him and I beat him the first game. I got quite lucky, but I beat him and I had my 1-0 over him. So I came back to LPW on Friday and I sent him a message during the show. I was like, yo, rematch? Because he's like, you're here? And I was like, absolutely, let's go play. Nice enough, he had the credits ready to go. We go and we play the Connect Four basketball game once again. And now I am 3-0 on him, so I know that's going to drive him insane. <laughs> I am surprisingly good at basketball for who I am. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I'm good as long as I don't have to run or jump or dribble or nothing. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, fair enough. For being like a six foot six, uh, six foot... Sorry, six foot five, I think. I'm probably wrong. Sorry, B Rad, but you are friggin' tall. Mm -hmm. um, no wonder you enjoy saying, hey, I'm really good at basketball. I get it. I will never play you a basketball, but Rich King is pretty good at basketball, so I like to see that. Oh, there we go. I see. I'm not going to be a real competitor. As soon as he's like, we have to move, then I'm going to be like, you win. Like, this isn't going to be a competition yeah. anymore, right? <laughs> But as long as I hold this 3-0 on him, I know there's going to be a part of him that just fucking hates me. And I can hold that every time I go to LPW now. I'm like, we're playing another game. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? Be at you and I, September 30th, Axe Throwing, let's do it. There we go. I And you know what? I hope I'd be there. I will record it if possible. If not, I will watch. But uh, I want to see this. Next question also from B Rat. Has anyone asked him if he's actually ever chopped any wood? All right. Here's the question. We're going to bury some people's hopes and dreams, or we will make them come alive. Are you or are you not legitimately a lumberjack? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. So like the uh, the place that I live at right now, uh, he's one of my best friends growing up. Um, this is the OG Larry. Uh, he had two giant trees in the back. And, um, yeah, two years ago we had to chop them down. So, yeah, we had a bunch of we had a bunch of stumps, a bunch of wood, and for days, that's all we did was just chop firewood, and we got we got wood for days in the back, like three years worth of wood. Um, I also studied to be an arborist for a little bit there too. So there you go. I mean, technically, oh, a that. lumberjack is just a, like a less fancy term than arborist, really. I mean, technically. <laughs> we need fancy school paper stuff, right? <laughs> this is the one that comes with a diploma or whatever, arborist, right? It just makes the trees look even prettier. <laughs> it's just the title that I never, ever have, so. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> All right, here's another one from B-Rat, and this one intrigues me because he always comes up, and I will legitimately say this better. He comes up with fun questions. Uh, but this isn't actually a question. Just ask him to do the whistle. <laughs> Is this your, like, a, a call? Do you go hunting or something? Is this where Lumberjack comes from? <laughs> so, uh, how can I keep this as PG as possible? Um, you know what? Without saying words. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> ah, okay. I think everyone just got a perfectly clear information as to what was going on. <laughs> so, if anyone ever hears that. You will know the Larry was around, <laughs> paying homage to some of his favorite pastimes. So, <laughs> uh, pastimes or present times? Hey, you know what? It's I'll it's all in the. If it's not happening in the moment, I guess it's all in the past. But I suppose <laughs> it's all relative. Who cares, right? It's all in, you know. <laughs> Sweet of the moment, right? Like... There you go. Carpe diem or noctum, whatever time of day it is. All right. Uh, question here from Morton P- Martin, aka Dorito Martino. What is your favorite Doritos flavor? You know what? Um, it will be Cool Ranch, just strictly based off of Dean Richter, because that guy loves his Cool Ranch Doritos. And you know what? Traveling with him all the time, he always had a supply. It just, it's like. It's like Bobby, when it comes with his uh, syrup, it just pops out of nowhere. So Cool Ranch, that's all I had for so many times for so long. So Cool Ranch. Fantastic. Thanks, Dean. I had to do the thing when you said Dean Richter because, like, as soon as, like, I hear Dean Richter, I got to put, like, my arm up in my other hand like this. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I have to do that. Real talk. Once Dean again, Richter. it's like the, yeah, like, if you've got the thing, people recognize it. You know what I mean? This one I never quite understood. I thought he's an H. Like, I didn't quite understand what was happening there. Like, is he going for the letter? I didn't quite get it. But he's got better looking arms than I do, so I'll just let him get along with it because it looks fine. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we got two more questions here. Let's go with those. From SAS Grizz, if Lumberjack Larry was going to be turned into a cartoon, what 90s cartoon would it be drawn in the style of? Oh, damn. That was like probably okay. my favorite question so far. That's a great question. Damn, I really got to think about this one. Okay, you know what? It would definitely be Reboot. I'm such a Reboot fan. Early 3D. It would be that mainframe studio style. And I was a big fan of uh, Beast Wars since, well, I'm a big fan of Transformers. So uh, I have like... I don't know. I think it's 104 Transformers now since last Jesus. summer. Jesus. But uh, we didn't even get to ask about right? these yet. That's a whole other like friggin' interview in itself, right there. Underneath my Christmas tree, still. Yeah, I got a Christmas tree up too. So, woo. Hey, you know but what? It's it only August. You know what I mean? People take a little bit longer these days. It's fine. Might as well just leave it up at this yeah, point. I see you. I have a wreath um, still on my door from last, like, Thanksgiving. So, like, on my front door. So, I think that's even longer. So, there you go. <laughs> I got lazy. I was going to go to Ikea one day and go buy a light. Oh, sorry, a lamp. And never happened. Two years later, I still have the Christmas tree up. And every time I play games, I plug that in. I plug the, the like, extra, like, Garcelin, like that's there with lights built in. I plug that in. That's around my uh, TV, and it's like, all right, this is cozy. I like it. There you go. <laughs> I like the holiday season right around Christmas because you could put up just like a little piece of tinsel in your office, and you go like, I'm glad I decorated this year. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> yes, you're just like that sprinkle of red and jolliness in my office now looks so much better. <laughs> <laughs> nailing it <laughs> but i have to say reboot fantastic you know it's funny because like i came back into wrestling specifically in 2016 because of the promo that enzo more and big cast cat cut when they came over to the main roster on the dudley boys like that promo got me really back into wrestling because i just had to watch it again but every time i heard enzo i was like fucking reboot like i'm like enzo's my boy <laughs> like <laughs> 
So my very first uh, character that I ever made on any wrestling game was was uh, oh, WrestleMania 18 from the Nintendo GameCube. And the very first character I ever make, and I always make him in every single thing, and it's it's hopefully like one day, who knows? I don't know. I always make a character named Matrix because that is such a badass name. And as soon as I saw like grown up Enzo, and he's like it's Matrix, I'm like whoa. He's badass now. Like had the scar <laughs> over his eye. He looked so cool. Oh man. He had that gun. Like, oh man, he had the babe. He had the dog. He was just ready to go. And he beat the shit out of megabytes. So it's like so many awesome. times. Here's the thing though. I was such a fan of Bob when Bob got lost in the mainframe. I like legit cried as a kid. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean Bob is lost in the mainframe? You open up a fucking game. You call it. You get the user here right fucking now. I was so irate as a kid. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, my God. oh and then, then Enzo lost that uh, that Mortal Kombat style game, gets the scar, and then the very next episode, like, oh man. And then having that, like, going up against Megabyte, beating Megabyte, him getting thrown into the web, and then with all the game, with all the past game enemies coming back when Mainframe is crashing, and he took on that devil again, and he beat the shit out of him. Oh, Man, that is comeback of the year right there. Like, that deserves so much. Like, that's, yeah, storytelling. <laughs> I love it. No, trust me. Like, uh, what is that? Poetic justice at the very end. The, the story of poetic yeah. justice. It's so good in Reboot. And, like, not only that, some of the coolest and legitimate coolest bad guys ever. Like you said, there's, like, Hack and Slash. There's Hexadecimal. There's Megabyte. You know what I mean? Like, so many fucking good uh, enemies that are just so iconic. I still think of Hexadecimal in that mask. How she'd go like, and you know what I mean? I'm like fucking so good. It's so freaky mm. too. Just, just changing uh. your emotion, just like that. And it, it was all done in the like, early... did you remember those old cartoons that came out like right after a uh, reboot? They were called short circuits and they lasted for like 15 minutes and they were like very early 3d animation. And they were just like doing random 3d stuff in the world of early 3d. I miss those. I think I, 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 yeah, you know what? Now that you mention it, I do remember that. That's, uh, man, TV back in the 90s was so good. There was Kids no bad shows as a kid. Them. Even the adult shows were great. I'd watch Roseanne and Golden Girls and This Old House and Tool Time. Or, you know what I mean? Like all these, like, I Dinosaurs. still fucking watch these. Dinosaurs was fantastic. Not the mama. <laughs> Not the mama. Not the mama. <laughs> Once again, I think we're back to have heard watched the exact same stuff growing up. Once again, I think we shared a childhood, which is fantastic. I think any '90s kid, if they never watched any of that, you get your ass get to out the there. Like, what whatever. do you do with your life? Did you talk to other people? Like, what was your childhood like? Were you involved that? in activities? Yeah. Like, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, talk, come back oh, and talk to me after you've lost that like the same NES game for like three weeks in a row and you can't beat the same level but you still fucking try come back to me at that moment kids don't like like play jurassic park you can never get to the end with dr grant but when you get there as the raptor you can never get to dr grant trying to freaking kill him i freaking lost my mind playing that game like oh everybody's got the game for me growing up dick tracy on the nes drove me oh, fucking bonkers pardon oh why would you do that to yourself? That was a uh, right? very, very difficult game. Legitimately one of the hardest games. To, like, if I've beaten that game now. I didn't beat it until I was an adult. I actually had made, like, a review of the game. So I, like, legitimately played the game and beat it as an adult. And it took me two weeks. And I was furious the entire time because that game is completely unforgiving. And you can die without... Like, you could, like, come out of a level and you spawn inside of a car and you go <laughs> instant dead and game over. And you start from the beginning. It's like, fucking Christ. Yeah, sorry. Okay, here's a challenge for you real quick. Sure. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the uh, for, for the uh, NES. I have You try to beat it. that one. I have beaten Get it. That. Back in 2013, I practiced that game as a speedrunning game. I did not do very good with it. But I you did. You the sewer level? Yeah. Oh, was yeah. The dare level? Dude, I, I, I got to the point where I could get to level six in 20 minutes. Like, I figured out the routes. I knew exactly what to do. I used to be a big speedrunner. Like, to this day, I, like, I did this about a year ago. I became the second fastest Canadian to beat the Lion King 
on the Genesis, which is such a fucking hard game. I'm now the second fastest Ooh. Canadian speedrunner. I'm like 12th or 13th overall on medium difficulty for the Genesis version. That was me. Damn! I used to play that game all the time. So, like, I, I yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from. I could never get as uh, teenage uh, Simba. Could never do that. There is so much difficult, like, just advanced, like, stuff that you have to do in that game to speedrun it that, like, I'm not good at it. But, like, the fact that I still maintain a record in, like, the top 15 or whatever it is. I'm second in Canada. That makes me happy. I'm like, good enough for me. Second best Canadian at the Lion King. So That is fantastic. Oh. I'll send you the video. It was streamed live here right on Twitch, like on this channel. I streamed it, so I'll send you the link to it so you can watch me. I think it was like 12 or 13 minutes. Somebody will tell me how long it took me, like 12 or 13 minutes, something like that. 100%. Uh, I'm down for that. All right. Last question here from B-Rat, uh, because he was probably asked this question as we were talking about this. What's your favorite scene from Team America World Police? <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna come out with something kind of controversial here because it's such a great movie. Probably Matt Parker and Trey Stone or like Matt Stone and Trey Parker's worst movie that they've made, in my opinion. Not a bad movie, but they've made so many great movies like Orgasmo and Basketball and of course South Park the movie and all that kind of stuff. And like just those are all so much better in my opinion. Um fifteen minutes, fifty seven seven fifty seven seconds and sixty six milliseconds is my record on the Lion King. Thank you, Shout. Damn, man! And it took me like ten minutes to get past the first level. So I'm like, oh. Um, honestly, I'm. I'm. It, it's tough because there's two scenes that come to mind that I absolutely like die over. So when he's saying his speech at the end about assholes, dicks, and pussies, I fucking howl at that. But when he is puking, when he's drunk and he leaves the bar, and it's like, that gets me every time. I'd say it's probably the puke scene because I show that to a lot of people. It's the first thing I think of every time I think of Team America is the puke scene, just the fucking vomit going everywhere. I love it. (laughs) And the fact that it's like a little bit, a little bit, and then a long stream, and then it's like a... um, it's like a sprinkler. <laughs> I think that was most. I think that was probably most of us by the uh, by the end of that one chip challenge. <laughs> I can't wait to see this video. I want to see who couldn't handle it, who couldn't stick it out. You know what I mean? We gotta we gotta separate, as they would say, the children from the adults, as they would say. Who could keep it down? You know what? I'll give everyone props because I had no idea what the hell I was getting into. Uh, the fact that everyone actually did that. Props on absolutely everyone because I had no idea what. Oh, okay, uh-huh, it can't be that bad. Yeah, forty-five minutes. Just make agony. 45 minutes. I managed to like um, go play some games like after everyone was like starting to die a little bit more. Um, that was right. I did disappear because I was playing <laughs> games. Grab my bags, put them on my car, and I just, just, just. Ralphed everywhere behind my car. Oh, like, wow. Brutal. It was a tough, it was rough. Absolutely <laughs> rough. So props to every single one of, like, I think there was nine of us. Uh, I'm terrible with how many people actually did the challenge, but props to everyone. I'm assuming coming to a Thaddeus out. or an Archer Report near you, I assume, is where it's going to probably be debuting. It, it definitely will. So props to everyone doing that because that challenge sucked. I had the worst heartburn ever. And then trying to puke that shit up. Damn, it made it even worse. Spicy all, vomit coming like, up. Yeah. Right in the mouth again. Right in the mouth. Starts it up. There's like something starts salivating. You're like, shit, I'm lost again. But uh, <laughs> fantastic. Before we end this here, who did the best though? Like who took it like a champ? Oh, Or were goodness. you just couldn't understand life at that moment where you were losing it? Like, um... life. <laughs> Everyone had their own different reactions. I was kind of popping a little bit because of Thad, because he just kind of stood there, mouth open, and it kind of looked like he was contemplating his entire life. I, I love you, Thad, but damn. He was going I through was something existential. <laughs> like, everyone took it well in their own, in their own way. 
Like, I, that, that one's so difficult. And he was in a know, suit, but, I assume, at the time, too. Like, that, we got to understand that, like, spicy food warms you up. Dude was in a suit. <laughs> 100%. And you know what? 45 minutes after I took that chip, when everything started, like, feeling real bad, I was drenched. And people were like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. A bunch of us just did that one chip challenge. And like, are you fucking nuts? <laughs> I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I suppose I so. Wrestling, so. I guess I am a little nuts. You didn't need to work out that day. You lost as much water in like body weight from like fluids that day. You're like, I don't need a workout. I've already sweat out as much as I need to today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I've kept you here for almost an hour 40 for this interview. It's gone so quickly. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much, seriously, for joining me here today. This has been an absolute blast. Well, you know what? No, thank you for the invite. It's about damn time because I keep seeing like everyone getting interviewed. I'm like, huh, maybe me one day. Who knows? I'm going to say I'm, I'm this. Kidding. I'm going to say this. There are a lot more of you than you than you think like when it comes to the Alberta scene there's well over 100 wrestlers that I know of just in Alberta it's an insane number when you actually break it down territory to territory so I do apologize so much for waiting oh, this long because I'm, I'm just, no I'm I it's something I'm I've even said I've said it to so many people I'm like I'm sorry I took like I've been around now for a few years it's still like I'm a shithead at this point. I, I took too many t months off. I'm like, I could have been so much further ahead if I just kept going. You know what I mean? This could have been a year ago if I wasn't so lazy. <laughs> oh, whatever. Life happens. Like I said, I'm old. I'm only busting your balls because it's, it's, it's fun. So, oh, yeah. If I can get the upper hand on someone, like, I don't know, axe throwing against B-Rat on the 30th, like, sorry, bud, I'm going to be laughing because I'm going to have the upper hand on you. It's really nice to hold something above B-Rat because at any moment he could hold something above you. And you know what, what? I mean? Like, at any moment, you just go like, hey, here's a pen. You'll never reach it. <laughs> That's like one of the tallest power bombs I've ever taken, too. So it's like, huh, shit. I'm just just I'm being his high. friend and, like, having to do this when you're next to him. Like, I feel so small sometimes, right? Because, like I say, I'm not a wrestler. Even you guys look so tall to me when I stand next to you because you're, like, at least 5'11", I'd assume. 5'11", at least. Whoa. Oh, See, I used to tell people I was 5'10", and then reality hit me. Or, you know, the weight on the weight of the world on my shoulders kind of shrunk me down a little bit. Now I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm five nine, but don't tell anyone. OK, that's that's our little secret. You wear five nine very well from outside the ring. Then how's that sound? I uh, I wish women thought the same thing, but uh, uh... <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. We'll just as long as you stand next to people like me or like Tony Machete, people will think you are plenty <laughs> tall. It'll be perfect. Right? Because he's like the one person I can say I'm taller than. I'm like, I'm a little taller than Tony, so I feel good about this. <laughs> God damn it, Tony! <laughs> but at the same time, if you look at both of us, it's not like the women are choosing me next to Tony, right? Like, I'm just, who cares if I've got it like an inch or something on him? Dude sculpted like a fucking Greek god. So, I don't win. I don't win shit. That's okay. I got a girl. I'm a little girl. I'm happy. I've got my three year old. <laughs> See? And there you go. And I still have to pay. Wait, what? <laughs> you know what? It's 2022. Everybody does whatever they need. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crying. You are. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I don't know what that's like. <clears throat> <laughs> See, it's like all my friends. I'm at that age where all my friends are either in a long term relationship or a or short term old, one. <laughs> or, like, or married or having kids, and I'm like, huh? What kind of beer am I drinking tonight? Uh -huh. <laughs> you're like i gotta try that new place down the street that just opened like these are your thoughts on a tuesday night at seven you're like there's a new mexican place around the corner <laughs> you know what See, i mean and the, only, and all, the only thing i ever want to do is just go visit like go to um how can i put this go to a gentleman's club and go go visit phil but i can't by myself <laughs> you're like not anymore now they make me have at least three friends <laughs> ever since that one incident <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not allowed to go to parties with couples anymore it's, it's, yeah too many other parties yeah they're just like there's something about wanting to do cocaine constantly really throws them off i just i don't understand it you're just like you know blow and they're all like get the fuck out of here you know oh jesus 
I'll pull off a fat castle and just a mount right there, bury my face in it. And I went to their I went to their room for a pizza party. <laughs> You're like, I, I'll do my own mountains. Don't you worry about that. I got my own mountains <laughs> to climb here in this gym today. But that uh, was that company. <laughs> anyways, Larry, thank you so much seriously for joining me here today. Plug yourself. Where can people find you? Seriously, I had such a blast. Um, people can find me on Instagram at uh, lumberjack underscore Larry Woods and on Twitter at, uh, at rad underscore lumberjack. So... Yeah, those are the two best things to ever get a hold of me or ever see anything when I do eventually post stuff. But it's always uh, it's always a good time. It's always it's always a, a rad time. You want to so. give a little shout out to the rads? Do you want to do like a little? I can't like. Do you want to do like a fingertip touch through like the, the screen here? Can we do that? Oh, 100 percent. Like oh, you got Mitch Clark, you got Rich King, you got T Y Jackson, and you got the judge Ben Uman, like Omen. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to ask you this right now because, like, I yeah. I am a stickler for getting people's names right when I have them talked on my interview. I was the one who was nailed down. It was Sager, not Sager. It was B-Rat, not Barat. You know what I mean? Like, I nailed this down. Is it Judge Omen or Omen, officially? It, it's Omen. It's Omen. Perfect. See, thank you. I, I thought it was, and I've always said Omen, but I was recently corrected, and I went, no, I think I am right. <laughs> No, a hundred percent. And there's, there's also, um, who is it? There's, there's one, there's one other shout out for the rads. Um, who, 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 who could it be? I'll figure it out next time. There you, go. <laughs> you know, that person just sitting there going like, you didn't make it super specific for the people across Canada. They, they'll never fucking know. <laughs> hey, if you know, you know, and I'm pretty sure everyone will know. There you go. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Where can people, like, where are you wrestling next? Where's your next show as far as we know? Do we have a next um, show planned? For, for a fact, it will be uh, Love Pro Wrestling at the South End Rec Room in Edmonton, Alberta on uh, September 30th. And... Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out this weekend, so we'll see what happens. Maybe it's some RCW on Saturday here in Edmonton at the Legion. Who knows? Fantastic. Dude, thank you so much for joining me here today. Seriously, this was such a blast. I like. I, I feel like I could legit make any 90s reference at this point, and you would probably understand what the fuck I was talking about, which is amazing. I always love when that kind of thing happens. <laughs> right? But no, thank you for the invite. Thank you for, for everything this, like, you're, you're cutting into Call of Duty time right now, but hey, that's okay because this has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you for all the questions and, and just thank you. Like, always love doing stuff like this. So. Apologize to the boys for me. Let them know I'm sorry I cut into Call of Duty time. I understand that's pandemic therapy <laughs> and that's a part of life now, so I get it. Like, I, like to me, that's Rocket League time. Like, I get it. <laughs> We're just going to get beamed tonight anyway, so let's... What's a, a little extra 15 minutes late? So, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> All right, buddy, you have yourself a wonderful night. I'll message you here very shortly. Sounds good. Thank you so much. No Enjoy. Have a good night, guys. Cheers, buddy. A big thank you to Lumberjack Larry Woods for joining me here today. That was such a fun conversation, as you all heard. Obviously, we got to reminisce about a lot of the great TV shows of yesteryear, getting into his time in wrestling, what he's been doing, what he would like to do, his thoughts of the Alberta independent wrestling scene, how he trained, all that good information. Uh, here today. So I hope you all have yourself a wonderful day listening to that. If you guys like what you heard, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. And don't forget to leave a wrestler that you would like to see uh, in the future as well. Give some love over to our sponsors here today, especially the Canadian Wrestling Archive, Backbreaker Media, uh, the Wrestling Rodeo. They do such amazing stuff for us here. Um, and uh, I, I really can't thank them enough. A lot of really great things have happened. We have surpassed 500 views on so many different wrestlers now at this point. So thank you, everybody, for listening in and engaging and uh, giving my content uh, a listen and our platform a listen. It's been an amazing experience. So thank you all so much. That's enough for me. I hope you all have yourself an absolutely wonderful night. We'll be back next Tuesday. See ya. I don't know why I kissed. Bye.